Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about the engine of the most powerful production Cadillac ever, the CT5V Blackwing. And it's also very exciting because it is coming with a manual transmission. Now there's a pretty hilarious timeline to this so let me catch you up on some news. On January 28th, 2021, GM announced their aspiration for an all-electric future by 2035. The press release states that they want to establish, quote, a safer, greener, and better world, end quote. They also said, quote, the company will also continue to increase fuel efficiency of its traditional internal combustion vehicles, end quote. Now, on February 1st, just four days later, GM announces uh, their most powerful Cadillac ever, the CT5V, with a supercharged 6.2 liter V8 engine producing 668 horsepower. How beautiful is that? GM, here to save the world with V8s and manual transmissions. Now, this story gets a bit confusing because yes, this is a CT5V Blackwing V8 engine. However, GM developed a 4.2 liter twin turbocharged V8 Blackwing engine specifically for the CT6V, which is no longer in production. But the Blackwing name has returned, so I thought it'd be fun to compare these two V8 engines. Okay, so let's start off with specifications, starting with the CT5V Blackwing. So this has a 6.2 liter supercharged V8, which is based on the LT4 engine, which came out in the 2014 Corvette Z06. Now the CT6V with the 4.2 liter Blackwing, this came out in 2019, five years later. However, it is no longer in production. So now we're looking at a new variant of the LT4 engine, which came out quite a while ago. So this is a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 with a 1.7 liter twin screw supercharger, about 10 PSI if it's anything like the LT4 in the Z06. And the engine for the CT6 was a 4.2 liter twin turbo V8 with twin scroll turbochargers and about 20 PSI of boost. So the 6.2 liter making 668 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, 659 pound feet at 3,600 RPM uh, versus that 4.2 liter 550 horsepower at 5,000 and 640 pound-feet of torque at 3,400 RPM. Both of them having similar compression ratios, uh, 10 to 1 and 9.8 to 1, thanks to direct injection and its cooling effect, helping to increase that compression ratio. Uh, the CT6 engine, 131 horsepower per liter versus 108 horsepower per liter with the new engine. Uh, the new engine, variable valve timing, but just a single camshaft. This is an overhead valve engine uh, versus that 4.2 liter Blackwing engine, the latest and greatest technologically advanced dual overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, and variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust. So interesting looking at the bore and stroke of each engine. Uh, the 6.2 liter here with 103.25 bore by 92 millimeter stroke. So a little bit, you know, kind of stretched out cylinders versus uh, a longer stroke um, versus its bore in the newer engine. So these tend to be kind of a more efficient design and these tend to have higher revving, better airflow because you can use bigger valves, except the thing is they're only using two valves, so not really. Um, though interestingly, even though this is a pushrod engine, uh, it revs higher, um, 6600 RPM was the LT4 in the Z06, it revs higher than 6000 RPM for that latest and greatest 4.2 liter uh, with the dual overhead cams and four valves per cylinder. So interesting that it was a fairly low revving engine that they put uh, that new 4.2 liter Blackwing. All right, so let's start diving into airflow. So for the 6.2 liter air coming in through the intake up front, traveling through the throttle body, then through that Eaton 1.7 liter supercharger. From there, it travels through air to water intercoolers before passing into the cylinders and then out the exhaust. And looking at this engine, I mean, it's a super compact design, uh, which is what's really so great about these, you know, large displacement, but very compact. Um, also, you've got with that air to water intercooler, you've got a very short path uh, for your air intake to flow, um, so you're keeping everything compact and keeping that airflow short, which is great for responsiveness. Of course, superchargers helping with response as well. And then an interesting thing to look as a comparison standpoint of where you have the intake in the exhaust on the 6.2 liter, 
versus where you have the intake and the exhaust on the 4.2 liter. But first, let's chat real quickly just about this four lobe Eaton supercharger. So just for quick demonstration, here we have the internals of the four lobe Eaton supercharger. This is just a smaller version of what's being used in this engine. Uh, you can see the four lobes there on the end. And so these rotors, these lobes rotate like so, pulling in air along the bottom here, and then having that air compress and exit out the back there. So it's creating higher pressure on this side versus this side, thus giving you boost in your engine. Now, looking at an exploded view of the engine, the air will enter up front through the throttle body, getting compressed through the inverted twin screw supercharger, where it is then directed up and over to then travel down through the air to water intercoolers, which are mounted in the cavities you see here in the manifold before entering the intake runners. And as you can see, this 1.7 liter supercharger means a significant bump in power, but keeps the overall size of the engine fairly similar to the naturally aspirated version. It's super compact packaging, great for flexible engine placement, but also the short routing for airflow means good response. Now this exploded view is of the LT4 engine from the Z06, uh, but I was able to get some new images of the actual engine, which is going to be going in the CT5 V Blackwing. So this is the new 6.2 liter. Now moving on to the 4.2 liter, you can see the air comes in through the intakes, passes through the intake portion of the turbocharger, through an air to water intercooler, then through the throttle body, where it is then routed to the intake manifold and into the cylinders. And as I had mentioned previously, you can see that the exhaust is now on the inside of the V and the intake is on the outside versus previously where that was reversed. And so the reason why they're doing that with this twin turbo engine is to have that hot center V where you have these turbochargers. So you have a really quick, really close routing for those turbochargers and they're stuck within the center of the engine where you have all that heat. And so it's got a short path and it maintains all that energy. If you cool that exhaust down, that's energy lost that you can't use to spool up that turbocharger. So you keep it really hot, you route it a very short distance and that enables you to have a more efficient turbochargers and better response. You're also keeping your intake manifolds away from that center of the V where you have those really hot temperatures. Now this actually has dual air to water intercoolers, um, which is pretty neat. They've got, you know, of course that short path because that intake air doesn't have to travel all the way to the front of the car. Instead, it just goes right across over to the intercooler and then into the cylinders. They said they're able to drop the temperature through that intercooler by 130 degrees Fahrenheit uh, with only a one PSI pressure drop. So really cool engine here on um, the way that they've laid that out. Neat strategy that you've also seen from the German manufacturers. Now I want to talk about a V8 with twin twin scroll turbochargers because the way this works out is actually a very beautiful thing. So starting off with our basic engine, we just have a four cylinder engine with a single turbo, single scroll turbo. And so of course, if you're running a four stroke engine, you have one power stroke uh, for every four strokes. Thus your crankshaft rotates two times, uh, 720 degrees for every one cylinder firing. So if you have four cylinders, well, you split those up evenly, and so you have 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation, two rotations, you divide that by your four cylinders, and you have a cylinder firing every 180 degrees of rotation. So what's happening in your exhaust, however, is that your exhaust valves may be open for significantly longer than 180 degrees. So, you know, it could be 220 degrees, it could be 280 or greater, and so what happens is, if your firing order for this cylinder, this engine right here is one, three, four, two, which is common for four cylinder engines, then cylinder one fires, your exhaust goes into the turbocharger, then cylinder three fires. And when cylinder three fires, the exhaust valve for one, because its duration is longer than 180 degrees, uh, that exhaust valve is still open. So this exhaust has come out of cylinder three, the exhaust valve opens, and it's just trying to find low pressure areas. And low pressure areas include that cylinder number one, because it's released all of its exhaust gases, or most of them. And so this exhaust might then travel back into that cylinder, uh, messing up its intake charge, and you know, decreasing your power, decreasing your efficiency and so what you want to do is make sure you don't have any overlap where you've got these two exhaust valves open at the same time one with high pressure one with low pressure and so that's why twin scroll turbochargers are so advantageous and so what they do is they split up the cylinders into two separate scrolls of that turbocharger but both of those same scrolls feed the same turbine which spins up the same compressor and so as you can see here one and three are on separate scrolls so they're now separating 
their exhaust pulses, and two and four are on separate scrolls, so they're separating their exhaust pulses. So instead of 180 degrees uh, between firings, Within each exhaust manifold, there's 360 degrees between firing. So if your exhaust valve duration is 280 degrees, well, you've got 360 degrees of total timing to wait, so it's no trouble. It's not gonna interfere with the other. So as a result, by not having that overlap between the exhaust valves, you get more power, you get better efficiency, and you get better response. You get your turbocharger to spool up quicker and at lower RPM. Everything about it's better, it's great. So how does this work out with a V8? Well, consider if you had a V8 with with a single turbocharger. So for all eight cylinders to fire, you've got 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation, two rotations of that crankshaft. So 720 divided by your eight cylinders, that means you have a cylinder firing every 90 degrees of crankshaft rotation. But if your exhaust valve duration is in the 200s, well then you're gonna have multiple cylinders overlapping with their exhausts. You don't want that to happen, so what do you do? Well, if you separate it into twin turbochargers, now you can divide that by two, and then twin twin scroll superchargers, now you can divide that by four. So 720 divided by eight divided by four, and that gives you a 360 degree window for each cylinder, just like we had with our four cylinder with a twin scroll uh, turbocharger. So very cool, the strategy here, and it's beautiful how the exhaust pulsation works out. Now this is just an example, this isn't uh, the Cadillac, uh, but the Cadillac, they did provide their firing order if you were interested. So I think it's fair to ask the question, you know, was that latest and greatest engine with all the new technology that went into it, the 4.2 liter Blackwing, uh, was that better uh, than their LT4? And so part of that comes down to, you know, preference. Um, and for me personally, I'd prefer a supercharged engine over a twin turbocharged engine. You just get better response. I feel like they're more fun. Uh, but there were just 1,400 of these 4.2 liter Blackwings made, um, which, you know, it's it's a bit disappointing. They put so much money and research and time into this. Um, it was new, it was different. They tried something, a unique engine for Cadillac, which I thought was very cool, uh, and then they, they end up dropping it. Now, was it actually any better? I mean, it made less power. I don't think power is, you know, everything here, and they could probably crank up the boost if they wanted to, uh, but from an efficiency standpoint, it certainly was better if you look at fuel economy numbers. I mean, the all-wheel drive, 5,500 pound Cadillac CT6V uh, is getting 14 mile per gallon city, 25 mile per gallon highway, uh, versus the rear-wheel drive, 3,500 pound uh, 2016 Z06 with the LT4 engine is getting 1323. So the fact that it's doing just slightly better, uh, you know, not that impressive, but the fact that it's doing just slightly better with so much more weight and all wheel drive, uh, so definitely a more efficient engine. I guess I should read that quote again from the beginning of the video. The company will also continue to increase fuel efficiency of its traditional internal combustion vehicles. Or not, whatever. Now, very exciting to me, both the CT4V Blackwing and the CT5V Blackwing are coming standard with six speed manual transmissions. How cool is that? Real world drive, tons of power, manual transmission, I love it. They're coming with rev matching, flat foot shifting, which they say for the CT4V, which has a twin turbocharged engine, uh, helps it maintain boost through that shift. And because I just love trolling far too much, here's a quote from an executive chief engineer at GM who during the reveal of the CT5V Blackwing stated, quote, to be driver's cars, first and foremost, you need to row your own gears. So standard six speed transmission in both vehicles, both referring to the CT4 and CT5V Blackwing. So there you have it. I, I was wondering if the C8 Corvette was a driver's car, um, but I, I guess it's not. And I guess in 2035, I guess they won't have any driver's cars, which is kind of disappointing. Okay, enough trolling. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.